good day students today i invite you to a topic of paramount importance the gastrointestinal tract a lot of essay questions short notes questions in viva versi specimens and slides and charts will be covered under this heading so i request you to kindly pay your kind attention this will be worth its length good this is a new logo for the gastrointestinal tract racing against time for students in pathology i start with the case history a 50 year old male competitive target oriented had complaints of recurrent gnawing pain in the epigastrium it has been aggravated on eating he also felt a burning sensation in the retrosternum and complaints of hematemesis on and off endoscopy revealed a definite lesion about 2 cm in diameter surrounded by flat congested mucosa so the question will be what is your diagnosis to discuss the etiopathogenesis morphology microscopy and complications also mention the differential diagnosis and explain your answers with a neat set of diagrams this i always emphasize upon the diagram shall carry us the additional mark we need i hope now you people are clear with the diagnosis it is peptic also this is a long topic that will be dealt under these headings and this is an endoscopic view of an ulcer and you find that the surrounding mucosa is slightly reddish because of congestion what is the definition it is a chronic usually solitary lesion that occurs in the gastrointestinal tract due to the aggressive action of the acid peptic juices i repeat a solitary lesion that is due to the aggressive action of the acid peptic juices and what are the features it is usually solitary but rarely there can be two and in very rare cases there can be multiple ulcers we shall see 98 to 99% occur in the duodenum and stomach and the ratio of the duodenal ulcer to the gastric is 4 is to 1 it is a disease of the middle and the older age however due to the changing ways nowadays it occurs in a younger population a genetic etiology has been suggested because it occurs in monozygotic twins and it is associated with hla b5 see this hla typing human leukocyte antigen it is a retrograde step we look backwards on the disease and then it is being divulged so many a disease newly come under this bracket of hla hence we shall just remember the numbers my professor of pathology in jipma used to say be strong in your basic and nobody can shake you look at this one what is an ulcer and what are the parts of an ulcer a repeatedly asked question an ulcer is defined as 
a discontinuity in the lining epithelium it can be skin it can be mucosa caused by the gradual death of cells when you cut your skin with a knife it is not an ulcer it has to be gradual and it has to be associated with an inflammatory reaction regarding the parts of the ulcer always there is a margin the margin is a two dimensional one you find the rim of the lesion is the margin and the edge is the side or the wall of the ulcer the floor is what we see and the base is the tissue that it rests upon so these are the parts of the ulcer be very clear about it in your surgery also this will repeatedly haunt us the margin the edge the floor the base your robin says it is a stigmata of civilization look at this ancient civilization where there is a lot of this manual work hardly i find any turmoil and competition amongst these residents when compared with the modern days the concrete jungle as it can be said and all of us know what is happening within automation crowding competition etc this is a beautiful mnemonic which i would like you people to kindly remember i had picked it up from medical mnemonics hats off to them there are four types type 1 one. one is less so it occurs on the lesser curvature two has two that means it occurs in the gastric and duodenal regions three is pre the pre pyloric area and four is the door which means near the gastro duodenal junction which means the door so this is a superb mnemonic i would like you people to memorize and credit to triple m my medical mnemonics again the words of robins no once an ulcer always an ulcer and this picture courtesy from wikipedia i find that it is a well demarcated ulcer hardly about 2 cm the white arrow points to the ulcer and another thing that is very striking is i find that there are radial folds of the mucosa this ulcer being a chronic process generates fibrosis because of fibrosis there is contraction producing the stellate mucosal folds and the edges are straight or mildly slanting the margins are flushed with the surrounding surface in the earlier diagram we had seen what the margin was the floor is what we see and it is usually clean because of constant acid digestion whereas a malignant ulcer will be covered with necrotic debris which we shall be seeing so these points kindly read and there are the common sites no one is a gastric ulcer another is a duodenal ulcer duodenum in the first part of the duodenum and stomach towards the lesser curvature so gastric ulcers whereas a non gastric will be more towards the greater curvature that is a cancer what are the other sites of a peptic ulcer one is a duodenum in the first part and the stomach that we had seen it can also occur in a barrett's esophagus gastro jejunostomy stoma stoma is the opening where they have reconnected it can occur in multiple sites such as jejunum stomach duodenum etc in a zollinger ellison syndrome and it is common in a meckel's diverticulum this is an intestine with a projection which is called the diverticulum the meckel's diverticulum these are the sites of the peptic ulcer but most common 95 to 98% will be in the duodenum and stomach in the ratio of 4 is to 1 and look at this one an endoscope has been projected and i find 
multiple ulcers at varying stages and uh, this can be probably a zollinger ellison syndrome spot the differences most of my slides will be pictures and pictures means pathology here is the ulcer that we had seen earlier and this is slightly different so what are the six differences that we can see you can spend a little time and try to find out six differences are the kindergarten question and what are the six differences sites it occurs in the lesser curvature or in the pyloric antrum the carcinoma can occur in the greater curvature again in the antrum size is less than 2 cm large more than 3 to 4 cm margin is flushed with the surface whereas the margins can be everted margins can be everted means it bubbles out the edges are straight in a case of a peptic ulcer here because of the erosion and corrosion there can be an undermining of the edges the floor is clean due to acid digestion whereas it is grayish black because of necrotic debris and the surrounding mucosa it is stellate because of fibrosis within the ulcer here it is a degenerative process so no stellate folds these are the six i hope i am correct 1 2 3 4 5 6 six differences please memorize again a beautiful picture by our library 2 cm usually solitary closer to the antrum in the first part of the duodenum most common and in the stomach in the lesser curvature and look at the stellate folds that are over there this i wanted to show you should have this in mind so the other things i am not bothered but i find that there are some muscular folds across so this is the lesser curvature and the greater curvature more of the anatomy i am not going into and when i see the histology there will be the normal mucosal glands in addition there will be the parietal cells and the entroendocrine cells so these are called the gastric crypts this histology we shall have in mind and why am i showing this picture so it is because of this muscle and whenever there is a contraction of this muscle it creates a kind of restriction of the blood flow and an ischemia and that is why the ulcer is more common in these regions morphology we had earlier seen a nice diagram and from one of the texts and i find that the edges are straight but mildly slanting they are not abruptly perpendicular and in the floor of the ulcer there will be the granulation tissue sometimes there can be an underlying blood vessel and when it is too deep there can be an erosion of the blood vessel producing massive hematomas these are the zones of the peptic ulcer we people should memorize and it is part of the essay question generally i find that an ulcer is a discontinuity i find a mucosa over here here it is absent so it is a discontinuity in the lining epithelium and here i find it is a cellular eosinophilic a zone of necrotic debris immediately beneath that there will be some cells which are having say irregular nuclei they have drawn some v and c these are all neutrophils superficially there will be a neutrophilic exudate below that i find that there are some lymphocytes proliferating capillaries and this is called a granulation tissue we shall be seeing this a proper histological photo micrograph and uh, this is the surface over here i think you can identify the mucosa which is absent this is the region of the ulcer so there is a gastric mucosa which is ulcerated and these zones again i am repeating because this is all mandatory and you will have to explain it with a neat diagram shown earlier necrotic debris neutrophilic infiltrate granulation tissue 
fibrocollagenous scarring. Sometimes you find these are the additional features that we can mention in the histology. The scarring will be extending up to the serosal surface. Serosa is the outermost surface of the stomach or the intestine. It extends up to that region. There can be thick walled blood vessels. And surrounding the gastric mucosa, there will be lymphocytes and plasma cells in the surrounding region. And peptic ulcer itself is a chronic process. Therefore, you will be having lymphocytes and plasma cells. This is a superb diagram. You people will have to draw it. And I have taken a lot of pain in depicting the text. So normally you find that there is a gastric damage because of increased acidity and the peptic enzymes. The damage is because of this. But then there are some protective factors such as the surface mucus, bicarbonate secretion, then the normal mucosal blood flow, epithelial protection that is there and prostaglandins. These are all some factors which protect us from the ulcer. Otherwise, all of us will be having ulcers. The cause for it to be injured can be H. pylori. Hyperacidity. Hyperacidity is one of the basic causes. Duodenal reflux. You find from the duodenum, the contents come back into the stomach. Alcohol, smoking, they are all some of the causes for injury to the mucosa. Apart from this, there can be ischemia. As I mentioned earlier, whenever there is an obstruction, there can be necrosis and ulceration. Shock, NSAID, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Please remember this list. It is a list of causes for peptic ulcer. The question will run like this. Define ulcer, what are all the causes? And enumerate the various causes, discuss the pathogenesis, morphology, microscopy. Another beautiful diagram of the microscopy showing all the four zones. Please see this one. And generally, Robin says, no acid, no ulcer. These are all the damaging forces here and these are all the protective mechanisms, not this one. And peptic ulcer, it does not occur abruptly. There is a normal mucosa, there is a region of inflammation, and then it is followed by erosion, finally an ulcer develops. A gastric erosion will be very superficial. Then an ulcer is a deeper excavating lesion. This diagram is again a beautiful one, but I would like you people to kindly spend a little time on this. I have pertinently divided a very large picture into two. This is the first one. See the boxes. So it can be because of the aggressive forces that we had mentioned earlier. Or there can be an imbalance between the gastric defense mucosa and then the aggressive forces. And you find that that can be because of ischemia or shock, rapid gastric emptying, and there can be a duodenal gastric reflux. So there's a way to read it. Whenever something is very large, divide. When in doubt, divide. And you people should have some patience. A star slide, kindly remember. And now I have completed. And what are the other brackets? No, I find that there can be the mucosal defense mechanism. Say, for example, surface mucus or bicarbonate secretion. And there can be some associated diseases not at all connected with the stomach. Cirrhosis, renal failure, Zollinger Ellison syndrome, etc., which can result in peptic ulcer. Another star. Please at least remember the major boxes. What are the complications of peptic ulcer? There can be a gradual bleeding. Patient might not notice. Or in some cases, there can be a massive bleeding, leading to a shock. 
as i told you there can be an erosion of a large blood vessel producing hematemesis hematemesis means vomiting of blood hemoptysis is coughing out of blood and there can be perforation as well as peritonitis when it goes too deep it can perforate the entire wall leading to a peritonitis sometimes a shock patient can even die since it is a chronic process there will be fibrosis there will be edema and that can lead to obstruction and fibrosis leads all to a stricture sometimes a surgery has to be done even in this case because of the outlet obstruction very 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 rarely there can be a malignant transformation so don't write it as a common complication because what your robin says is cancers frequently ulcerate ulcers rarely cancerate please remember this complication this is also a question that is asked the